Hey guys, Jeremy here. Uh, sorry for the kind of up close look here. This is just a new lens that uh, my dad got for me. It's a 50 millimeter lens and I just wanted to try it out for something. Mainly I actually wanted to talk about uh, a recent background extra story I had. Uh, just thought that this was really interesting. Some people have asked me what were the details of it. My roommates, my girlfriend know, but so on Monday, so Sunday night, well first starting Sunday, Sunday I was working on a indie short film and I was out in Burnaby and I didn't get home until 4.30 a.m. on Monday morning. Uh, it takes about an hour, it takes about me about 15 minutes to get from Burnaby to where I live. So I get about, I don't know, so the sun's coming up. It's really hard for me to sleep when I'm hearing the freaking birds chirping out the window. So anyways, I get maybe about four or five hours of sleep, and I get ready, I get dressed, and I'm heading out to Abbotsford, which is in the opposite direction, not nowhere near as far as Burnaby, uh, for a background shoot. A friend of mine, Shauna, she contacted me saying, hey, you want to be a background extra in a Punjabi movie? I was like, oh, sure, where is it? Surrey. So the day a few days before, she it was originally in Surrey, and then it got changed to somewhere in Abbotsford. And then I'm at the gym, like I, I'm trying to go to the gym before I go to this shoot, and at 12... All of a sudden, it's changed to a different church. Um, in the end, it wasn't actually a change of location entirely. It was just a change of which church they use first. And that was at 12. And already, I'm getting the assumption that things are kind of a little bit hectic, a little bit not very organized on this show. And I arrive, and holy shit, I am not... I am amazed that my friend Shauna has not gone on a absolute homicidal rampage because... Low budget Punjabi movies are an absolute nightmare compared to the fact that we've been on TV shows, movies, and everything, and with solid crews, schedules, and everything. This was weird. The first thing that we noticed, at least from what I noticed from what it was going on, there's no call sheets, there's no lists of how the shots are going, how the scenes are going. It's kind of just off the top of a script, which was a really interesting script once you got to read. So we're at this church in old Abbotsford and I put on my Mr. Rogers getup, which is a, t a dress shirt with this red cardigan I got from someone. They notice me and they say, hey, you, you can be a reporter. And I was like, excuse me? They say, you be the reporter character here. Here's a line and I'm okay. So they the sound guy comes over and wires me. The sound guy who I saw was drinking a bottle of wine so maybe that's how they were getting through the day. Apparently other people were saying, um, the non-East Indian crew were saying that they were trying to, <laughs> they were having to have some, like, some drinks throughout the day to make it through the day. Anyways, so I get wired up, and then all of a sudden I notice that they've, w what's happening is this, the girl, the main character of this film, who is a big uh, soap opera actress in India, apparently, she's coming out of the court the courtroom, which is the church, uh, because there's been a monumental decision made in some court proceeding or something like that. So as she's leaving, we all swarm her with our cameras and everything. Uh, my buddy, uh, one of my other coworkers, Alex, who is a, he was a reporter or a cameraman with his little handheld canning camera. <laughs> <laughs> this one was so funny. So we're all swarming her. They're doing a, doing a crane shot, which took forever to set up. Anyways, so we're all following her, and I notice that there's no lines for us given. So I'm just saying whatever bullshit comes to mind. Are you happy with the Simi, hey, give, us a, give us a scoop. What's happening next? What's the book deal? I had a lot of fun with this because the sound guy is hearing everything I'm saying and I'm like, I wonder if it's going to get into the movie. So I just keep doing it over and over again. Can you give us a comment? Showtime. Who's going to play your character? Can you give us a motion? Give us a motion. Will be, will be the distribution. The second time they do the same shot of the girl walking down the, uh, walking down the street, down the sidewalk, they make her... They they try and do what is a dolly shot, which is they usually you have a dolly setup, which is this uh, mechanical heavy weighted device that you have it as a seat and a, a contraption that attaches the camera to, and other crew members are on it and whatnot. And usually there's a pull focus guy too along the side, like doing this with his little device. This 
was literally just a wooden platform with some sandbags on it, a wooden box, and a guy holding a $20,000 Red Dragon camera, maybe like, I don't know, $10,000, $20,000 Red Dragon camera that still has the mounts to be put on a slider on his shoulder like this, and there's a guy standing next to him holding the focus like this. It's the most ghetto setup I have ever seen of a <laughs> with an ex with an extremely expensive video camera. So anyways, again, I do my bullshit. I say book deals, all this garbage and whatnot. So then they finish with that setup and then they go to the second church, which is down on Mount Lehman Road. And we get there and I change into another setup, which is this, I just brought a vest and a tie and a white dress shirt, which is, I don't know, I just do that. I like to wear my vests. Anyways, they see me and and I quote from one of the crew members, I'm not going to say who, but he was one of the people who was kind of in charge of giving people directions. I looked Jewish, so I fit the role of a lawyer. <laughs> I'm designated as a defense lawyer, so they put me down uh, the table to the right. They're trying to turn this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this church into a courtroom, yet there's no jury. There's, there's absolutely no jury area, which is so funny. Anyways, so they set us up. They, they see how they're going to set up the shot and everything. Um, and then they let us go back. So I'm reading my book and everything. And then they're like, okay, come back. One of them, one of the East Indian guys, I, I don't know. I couldn't tell who really was the AD. I could tell who the director was. There was this one guy who whispered a lot. He seemed to be the director because he was saying cut and, act and, and action and everything. But there was a guy in a blue shirt who we think was the AD, but we're not entirely sure. And then there was these other guys who were the AD's underlings. I don't know. Anyways, so we get into the we get into the court. We're going back into the courtroom, and all of a sudden they make say they say here you sit here, and I'm now the prosecution apparently. So I went from being a defense lawyer to a prosecution lawyer in less than ten minutes. And we sit down, and the AD, the assistant director, who I think was the assistant director, hands me this script with this terrible broken English and says, Can you say line? Uh, sure. I read the line as they're setting up. It is so broken. It looks like what you would do... I remember doing this for my French classes back in high school. It's like they wrote the line out in Punjab, and then they put it into Google Translator, and that's what they got. So, the line comes, they say it from, like, they're filming me from behind both times, which is like, oh, okay, whatever. And then, the third time they do it, after the sound guy has actually dewired me, because he doesn't think they're gonna film me anymore, all of a sudden, they turn the camera around, and they shove it in my face. And I'm supposed to stand up, say my line, and the main girl is supposed to appear behind me in a rack focus. Like it's gonna fo it's the focus is gonna go from me to her because she's making a dramatic entrance into the court into the court case or whatever it is. I do the line the first time, and then they realize that I'm not wired. I was trying to make a point about it, and then the sound guy comes in, and all they do is they just take the sound cue mic and everything, and they just put it on the table in front of me because it's not in view. And that and so then that's they shoot the scene and. I found out later that, well, first, I know I'm going to get uh, dubbed. I'm like the white, the weird white uh, guy, the white guy who gets dubbed in Jackie Chan's old ac uh, Chinese action films. But then I also heard that it was going to be dubbed in Hindi, which means that the lead actress who is, um, I, who's speaking Punjab in the film, her voice is not even going to be used in the end. She's going to be dubbed. So... I don't care really what happens to me. I want to see what I look like being dubbed in another accent, or sorry, another language. Because I can totally finally have that Godzilla, the Japanese Godzilla moments with the terrible English uh, <laughs> dubbing. So I'm really looking forward to this. Actually, hopefully I can find this somewhere because I really want to show this to people because this was such an interesting experience. And this was all in eight hours. Eight hours to do two scenes, which I guess wasn't that bad, but just of how abs how unorganized, but as well as organized this whole setup was, how crazy the whole 
the the miscommunication between the North American crew guys and the East Indian crew guys was so out of left field. They like, I think the gaffer or one of the main light guys on this crew came up and asked him if they wanted something. They didn't really respond to him, so he just went and did it anyway. It was so chaotic. The fact that my friend Shauna is still working on this, I give her major props because she's got to be tearing her fucking hair out from this. But I do thank her for taking me on to this because this is one of the most interesting filming experiences I've ever had. It's my it's my first on-screen experience since being a background extra in Jennifer's Body. Yeah, I'm this bat, this guy in the background here when uh, Megan Fox and Amanda Seyfried walked past me. That was back in 2008. Yeah, it was a fun time. I enjoyed being a part of this film. I'm hoping I can go back on. I admit, though, if I were to work on something like this, I would be losing my marbles. Oh, that was another thing, too. There was no locations team which is what I'm a part of right now and uh, for my job. And the fact there was no locations, my buddy and I, who are in locations, we kept on looking at scenes or situations that we would normally take care of. And we were just like, this is so weird. Anyways, guys, that's my experience of being on a Punjab, I think Punjab or Hindi movie. I don't know. I, I don't know. But it's going to be interesting because all the background aside no the main their main actor the main actress um uh, these guys who are on trial I, they're the, the they're the victims or whatever of the whole court thing aside from the actress and these victims everyone else whose background was white so i'm very interested to see how this works out oh wait no sorry i do make um there was this little chinese lady who was given the role of being the main reporter next to Misty, Miss, I can't remember her name, but she was good. I don't know why I, I don't know why I was Mike because she was killing it, as you can see in the clips. But anyways, guys, that's all for me. That's my experience of being on a low-budget Punjab movie. I just wanted to talk about it. I, I really enjoyed the experience. It made me feel a little bit more comfortable, happier with where I am with the shoots that I'm on, because I would, I don't have much hair to tear out anymore, and I would be tearing out what was left if I was on this. But it was definitely an eye-opening experience. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. Uh, sorry if that you got weirded out for me being so close to my face the whole time. But I thought it'd be interesting. I just wanted to try out this lens. It's a nice new lens. Anyways, that's all for me. See you guys next time.